Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this gloriously gray day. It's my favorite kind of weather. We were supposed to have outdoor worship this morning, and I went uh, down at St. Andrews, and I went and tried the chairs and flipped over backwards. So we had to worship inside, which I felt was appropriate and safe, but very sad. <laughs> so I am thrilled to be here in one piece and not money. Uh, thank you to Runa Lee for um, beginning Acolyte training and for Vicki Bell for helping that. We uh, are so thrilled to have uh, hearts and hands that are willing to help and volunteer. With that, uh, welcome to worship, all of you. Um, those who are worshiping with us online, um, longtime members and visitors and friends. We begin our service by centering our hearts and minds with an opening hymn, number 532. 532 will remain seated for the opening verses and will stand during the closing verse. but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We turn to our Kyrie, which can be found before the hymns on page 184. 
Page 184, setting 8, we'll sing verses 3 and 4. satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, you shall, rise, you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsibly. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Our second reading is from Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. 
Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I trembled in fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape, would they refuse the one who warned them on earth? How much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please rise as we sing the gospel acclamation for setting. Yeah, so 
some of you are like, uh, if one of those comes home with me, you're going on attention, Pastor Gary. Do you want to know what? Been there, done. I'm willing to do it again for the sake of the gospel. Okay, you girls can go sit back in the pews. You will have to keep it quiet from here on out, though, which is why I owe Vicki and Linda pedicures or something, keeping my kids quiet after I give them up nine loud toys. Uh, these are called fidget toys. Has anyone ever seen a fidget toy before? Uh, I like the spinny ones because I find like just the vibration very soothing. Um, but this, the popping sound, while very abrasive, can also be very, very soothing. We'll let Rita put it all back in place real quick here. Maybe when you think about giving your brain a break, that's not the sound you're thinking of. Um, but rest assured, for some, it is very soothing. Uh, it does give us a wonderful break. Um, have you heard the phrase, blessed are the flexible, for they shall never be bent out of shape? I, I love this. Phrase. I have no idea who said it. So if somebody knows who said this, who this can be attributed to, I would love to write them or their family a thank you card. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall never be bent out of shape. The beauty of these is that they can be bent way out of shape. What kind of things uh, bend you guys out of shape? We all have them. Sometimes we call them pet peeves. But what's something that bends you out of shape? Um, people being rude or uncaring. Perfect timing, my kid. <laughs> I did this to myself, you guys. What uh, what lies does the world tell you that you believe that bends you out of shape? This one's a good one. We all have things that the world has told us that we believe. And if you remember it, it means that that lie has taken up space in your brain. So, like, you're not smart. You're not pretty. You're not cool. You're unwanted. You're not capable. Those are lies we listen to, and they bend us, and they twist us out of shape. Or think about a trauma. Something that has got you twisted up. So twisted up that you are not sure you can get untwisted. Maybe somebody hurt you. Maybe you hurt somebody else. What happens when we realize that it's not just the things we're encountering day in and day out that bend us out of shape, but maybe we've always been bent out of shape. For the sake of not making you guys listen to that sound again, more than you're going to. It's going to be a long sermon. Um, this is the shape that it normally came in. Right? Nice, compact, tiny. But maybe this wasn't the shape you were supposed to be either. Definitely doesn't feel good to be like this. Be twisted and knotted up. Maybe this wasn't the shape you were supposed to be in anyway. Maybe you were already bent out of shape by being compacted. Perhaps, perhaps I'll come back into the view here in a second. Perhaps you're not supposed to be squashed up or turned around into a knot. And perhaps, above all things, you aren't even supposed to be on your own. Maybe you're supposed to be something like this. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Did I find giant light up fidgets? I did. Maybe you're not even supposed to be, but yeah, these are coming home with us, honey. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you weren't supposed to be on your own. Maybe you were supposed to be connected to others and bent into something that resembles the light of Christ in the world. Yeah, so no metaphor is perfect, but they help us reveal some truth. Maybe this isn't the shape you're supposed to be in. Maybe it's not the shape you're in right now, but maybe it's more something like this. That the bends and the twists that you are curved into serve a larger purpose to remind everyone that they're loved, that we all fit together and belong together. I'm just going to lay this right here for now. Being bent out of shape is something that we always consider a bad thing, and usually, at times, it does happen. It's not pleasant to have a plan and to go with the plan and then have it be twisted and bent out of shape. Here's a non-fidget toy related example. Uh, as I go into mom mode for 30 seconds. Anyone grow carrots? Yes, okay. Uh, we can't grow carrots here to save our lives. 
But I loved growing carrots as little. In fact, in kindergarten, I had to be in a skit and I had to create uh, a line. I had to pick a healthy food and I was like, I'm a carrot, I'm a carrot. And I came up with my own line and I remember, I am a carrot, munch, munch, munch. You will want another one. And I remember the teacher specifically trying to get me to rhyme it with a bunch and I was like, no, I get to write my line. This is it. <laughs> 30 years later, I'm like, I should have rhymed it. <laughs> This one was right. I should have rhymed it. <laughs> uh, carrots, when they do not grow in the straight form, um, they get chopped up into baby carrots, or or they get sent off to things called secondary markets, also known as ugly markets. Now, a carrot that grows in a loop or has multiple um, roots growing out of it instead of just your standard stereotypical bugs bunny carrot, the farmers get paid less for selling those to secondary markets because consumers pay less to purchase them and you buy them in things called misfit produce or ugly box markets. And I just wanted to ponder the impact of those words. A carrot that grows in a wonky shape is no less healthy, nutritious and beneficial than a carrot that grows in your stereotypical form. A beet that grows in a weird shape as opposed to your beautiful sphere is no less delicious than any other meat. We decide that there are these standards and people will fit into these standards. When you think of the word secondary, you think less than, right? We just finished state fair, think of how many 4-H kids went to the state fair, they didn't get the top tier of ribbon, I don't even remember if it's blue or purple anymore, I just remember getting a lot of reds, specifically for cucumber flavored chocolate chip cookies that I did submit, yes I did, yes I did. Secondary, we know what it feels like to be secondary, or we know the pressure and the tension and just the despair of competing to be in that first tier all the time. We also know the word ugly, we say it about ourselves all the time. We look in the mirror, why can't I grow a beard? Why is my hair receding? Why is my nose like this? Why do I have a double or a triple chin? Why? Why does my arm do this? Why are my ankles? You know, like they used to do ankle contests in World War II. Like they used to be like, well, at least I have my grandmother's ankles. I'm like, now where, now where did those go? I don't even have those anymore. We know what it is to pick ourselves apart and say this aspect of myself is secondary or this aspect of me is ugly. And in doing that, we end up sinning against ourselves because we're not honoring the image of God that we all are. But even worse than that, we're devaluing all other humans that don't match a skeletal structure that we find in a biology classroom. We devalue all other aspects of creation that somehow don't fit the cookie cutter shape that we have in our mind when we were learning about those things. Our word in the scripture uses the word tripled, which actually is a whole nother world that bends people out of shape. Crippled is a word that has been used to degrade people's bodies who through accidents or just sheer genetics, their skeletal structures are different. It's a hurtful word. It's an ugly word. It denotes something or someone is less than. It's a word that we use when we talk about our own spirituality when we fall into sin. This isn't robust as it should be. It's crippled. We treat ourselves and others as if they are less than, they do not fit a certain standard or mold. And it's not that we are ugly. No, you are not. And it's not that you are less than. You are not determined by a value that the world puts upon you. You're not less than when you disagree politically, when you're not dressed the same way, when you have different hobbies, when your pastor, bless her heart, gives very very noisy toys to her children during service, right? Because like, she knows I am a font of grace. There's nothing I can do from here, folks, other than learn from my mistake. <laughs> you are not less than if you do not like sports. You are not less than if you cannot sing. You are not less than if you cannot cook. You are not less than if you can't walk or if you can't stand up straight, or if you can't remember what you wrote on your post at all 10 minutes ago. You are not less than. Do not believe the made up things that the world says about you that twist you and they bend you out of shape, but rather 
Let what God says about you inform the ways in which you twist and bend through the world. You, child of God, are not secondary, you are not less than, and you are certainly not ugly. You are all beautifully, fearfully made, inside and out. Bob Dylan wrote in one of his songs, and of course, I thought I would remember the name of the song, so I didn't bother putting it in my sermon. But one of his lyrics goes like this, bent out of shape from society's pliers, cares not to come up any higher, but rather get you down in a hole that he is in. Culture and society do not often build us up. Sometimes you obtain and achieve acceptance, approval from society and culture, but it very rarely lifts you up for very long. Because you can't keep that standard forever. Instead, society and culture do tear us down. And in doing so, we tear ourselves down and we tear each other down and we perpetuate a sin of tearing up the world instead of building each other up as we are supposed to. So don't you think that this woman who was crippled by a spirit for 18 years deserved a Sabbath? This is something interesting. We actually often get bent out of shape when we talk about Sabbath. Well, what is rest? What is Sabbath? Do you deserve it? Do you earn it? Or is it simply gifted to you? Don't you think this woman deserved not just a day of rest, but to be set free? So let me, let me pose it in this way. Is Sabbath, day of rest, a requirement, because it's commanded to us by God, or is it an opportunity? For rest for us to assemble is worshiping on Sundays a Sabbath or is it faith-filled work punchline is both and some of you are here doing very heavy spiritual emotional relational work you are probably gonna need to go home and take a nap some of you are here because you worked hard all week and when we did the confession and forgiveness, remember, confession and forgiveness happens before service because we can't celebrate until we've been reminded that we are set free. And you felt that guilt and that shame or all of the things that you didn't accomplish and all the expectations you couldn't possibly meet fall off your shoulders and you're resting here because the hard work is done and Christ did it for you. It's a both and. Some of you are here working and some of you are here resting. That crippled woman was probably there worshiping. But maybe she was getting something far out of it, far different out of it than others were. God is a God of healing and wholeness. God is a God who created us to be caretakers of those parts of creation that are less equipped or less powerful than us. And what did God do on that Sunday in the form of Jesus? He took a woman that everyone thought was secondary, who for 18 years had been battling this demon she could not overcome, and God healed her. It'd be like stopping midway through a service, or right before when you're playing those harmonies and those keys, and right before you hit that last chord that resolves the arc. God just stops, he's like, hold on. This person who's probably sitting off in the back or in the side or maybe even behind a pillar or maybe standing in the narthex and she's healed. She is secondary because she is a woman in her culture. She is less than because she is possessed by a demon. And God says, this is what I came for. Not just for order and calm and peace, but to upturn the world, to bring healing to those who are consumed by despair to bring life, to connect us all with all of our bends and our twists and our broken pieces, to connect us all into a reminder of who God is, which is love. So it's hard to talk about rest as we're coming to the end of summer. Summer is not a rest time. Summer is adventure time. I think some of you guys know this. If you're a farmer, you're gearing up for harvest. If you're a teacher, you're gearing up for the chaos of the classroom. If you are a student, you are gearing up for the hard work of being humbled by not knowing what you're studying and then figuring it out and reaching a high and you start that roller coaster all over again. 
you're a grandparent, maybe you're gearing up to do school pickup. If you're a parent, you're gearing up to do homework. We are in between this season of work and rest, and God reminds us that we are to rest. So how do you rest? We all rest differently. How do you rest? So that when you feel those twists and those bends in your life, it's not that something is trying to break you, but that grace can allow you to be molded to God instead of snapped in half by sin or shame or despair. As we talk about rest and Sabbath and how to not get bent out of shape, just remember, you are beloved children of God. God does not set you up to fail, to be lost. God does not set you up to be broken or wounded. Rather, God comes into our lives to help us be flexible, to rebuild us when we are broken. Please, children of God, do not forget that God is sustaining you through all of the twists and all of the turns. God is bringing healing despite your situation, despite what the future would look like. We simply get to be stewards, connected to that larger light, that bigger picture, that it's not just about what you accomplish, but it's about what mercy and grace finds you in the midst of this world. So if you would, please pray with me. Merciful God, we pray that if we are bending today, that we may be bending around your mercy and your grace. If we are straight and tall, may we be lifting others up along with us and not pushing them down. Help us to see how we are made equal in Christ. That we may be desiring of the world's healing and accepting of the healing you bring us. May we radiate your light and your love in our work and our play and in our rest, whenever that may be. And in your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to sing with me our hymn of the day, Lift by the Cross.
faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found on the screen or in the back cover of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures, protect the habitats of fish and birds, Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us into ventures for the sake of learning continually. God bless those students who are going back to school. Give endurance to their teachers. Bless school bus drivers and food providers, as well as janitorial staff. Bless parents who rearrange schedules. Bless grandparents who do pickup and all of those who seek to help build up young minds and encourage those teachers who do so. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with those around you with a handshake or a peace sign, a hug, fist bump, the Vulcan sign. I'm practicing it again at Nesta Plus. Peace be with you, those who are worshiping with us from home. You may be seated as we turn to a time of offering.
God of abundance, you have sent before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them yes. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
body of Christ to be given for you. The body of Christ to be given for you. This is the body of Christ to be given for you. Send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements. You may be seated. A couple of announcements before uh, we go um, is that everyone gets to take home a fidget toy with them. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't pass them out earlier, because I can trust you guys. <laughs> take one. Um, the students and uh, educators get lighter ones. You get one. Start with one. Oh, there we go. Start with one. There we go. Everyone take it. I mean, it's optional. It's not a command. <laughs> but it's going to be very cathartic, especially as those Akitas are coming out. we got students here. Teachers. Teachers. Students. Okay, I've got more. I've got more of these in the back, so. There we go. We'll give you guys ones, just in case you sneak out. I know where I can find you. We'll get you one for your office. By the chance for your teachers, work with the kids. We'll just take some extra. Remember, we're going to be joyful, cathartic. Everyone, let's just have a nice moment. Everyone go for it. Also, people who like the flavor of vanilla are creative and original, not boring like I always thought no, I was. But oh, they do light up. So you can so you can always remember. Now make sure you don't put it on the flashing one. Just keep it on there. So you always remember. Sometimes I come up with these really I think yes uh, profound illustrations of what these are for. Push the little black button. Say Jesus loves you. Yeah. So the idea is that they light up so you remember that you shine with the light of Christ. No matter if you are kind of in your fetal position trying to breathe because summer's over, or if you're very excited, stretched wide. So 
please remember um, you shine the light of Christ. You are beautifully, carefully made. Uh, this is the day that God has made and rejoices in it because you are in it. And with that, please receive a blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the way of life this day and always. Amen. May we go forth singing our sending hymn, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow, 884.